Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, I want to show you a Shopify store that's currently for sale on flipper.com for 100,000 US dollars. It's three years old and has an average monthly profit of $3,700. This particular store is quite interesting because it's what I would call stage two drop shipping. They've kind of moved on from the traditional drop shipping business model into creating what most people would call a real brand. So instead of drop shipping a product and trying to scale it to the moon as quick as possible before then dumping it and moving on to a different product what these guys have decided to do is actually double down on that original product get it private labeled working with a mass producer in china and building a quote unquote real brand and this is actually what i recommend everybody watching this video do now i don't know for sure whether these guys drop shipped the products you're about to see initially but given the products they're selling and the advantages and pros of drop shipping i'm going to do a specific video on this next week coming out on wednesday on the pros and cons of dropshipping and in my opinion what the best long-term strategy to follow is and to give you kind of like a shortened version it would be to use dropshipping to test a product and as soon as you've validated it and can sell it profitably with dropshipping you should then move on to private labeling but anyway back to idlespace.com so these guys currently for sale on flipper.com if you haven't signed up for their alerts i recommend you do so it is a fantastic product research tool every single week you will get sent stores like this one that are for sale that are profitable that are selling products that you can source that we can source ourselves so we can see everything behind a successful business so in this video i'm going to show you exactly what a successful shopify store design looks like i'm going to show you exactly what a profitable drop shipping products looks like and i'm also going to show you what profitable facebook ads look like as well so there's a lot to learn and like i said if you haven't already definitely sign up to alerts on flipper.com okay so just some background information that you might find interesting because it helps create the picture of what a successful store looks like and gives you context for what i'm about to show you so they currently have 12 main SKUs. Basically, they're selling 12 different products. The average order value is in and around $200 and they have a refund rate, which is close to 1%. So this is typically average when you're drop shipping, you'll probably find it maybe closer to two. Having an AOV though of $200 carries many, many pros. The biggest one being is that you can afford to pay more for your customers. You can afford to pay more for your CPA. So your cost per acquisition. The business primarily generates revenue through the sale of its beanbags. So that's going to be the winning products I'm going to show you. I'm also going to show you where you can source pretty much the exact products from. So you'll be able to see essentially exactly how they've been able to create this profitable business around just one product. The estimated time commitment to keep the business running is around 10 to 20 hours per week, which is on the high side, I'm going to say, I think it's on the high side and um, we'll see in a second what kind of workloads um, they're outsourcing or if they are at all. Um, given the size of this business, I definitely think you'll be able to bring that down a bit. So those 10 to 20 hours per week includes managing the website, um, which won't be a lot of time, um, sourcing new products, which probably won't be a lot of time either, um, handling customer inquiries that could definitely be outsourced and order processing as well. This 100% should be outsourced. Any business that gets to a point where it's bringing in consistent sales on a daily basis it is a much more valuable use of your time to put into marketing to put into the things that are growing your business and outsource all of the kind of maintenance to VAs we currently have a great relationship with our supplier in China they understand so on and so forth production is usually 30 days customer base is varied 65% female with 25 to 54 year olds making up 50% of the demographic so they're even telling you who you need to target to sell these products for and the brand primarily inquires customers through its website marketing channels including google ads facebook instagram influencers so on and so forth customers are primary primarily domestic from australia and new zealand so what you're seeing in this video is a tried and tested proven business in these two countries which would show or tell us that there's definitely an opportunity to be had as they even put in their own words international expansion um, into other countries here in the uk or us or replicate something similar in a different country if we talk numbers then so these are the three primary expenses um, facebook ads which are two and a half grand a month their freight 260 and a 3PL 300. So what they're doing essentially is they're paying for all of their goods to be shipped into a 3PL who will then either go into the Shopify store or be sent a fulfillment list, which they'll then 
pick, pack, and dispatch the orders for them. This is their revenue over the last 12 months, on the best month being in December, which is typical for pretty much every e-commerce business with a profit of $12,000. So here's their financial stats then for the last 12 months. So their annual revenue of $90,000 or just under. Now, obviously it's not crazy and typical what you would see on YouTube of people talking about doing millions in weeks or millions in months, but it just goes to show. So 10 to 20 hours per week, which is like a part-time commitment, turning over an annual profit of 45,000 US dollars. I think one of the biggest things or places where beginners go wrong when it comes to drop shipping or creating an e-commerce business is they get carried away way too quickly with trying to make as much money um, as possible when what they should be doing is trying to scale as slowly as possible but as profitable as possible trust me it is there's so many more benefits to turning over ninety thousand dollars with a fifty percent profit margin than turning over say half a million dollars with a ten percent profit margin at the end of the day both businesses are making the same amount of money money bottom line however with a business like this which is so much more efficient it's going to require so much less work to make that same amount of money okay so jumping onto the Shopify store they have a really nice store with some real custom features that you don't see on kind of like typical um, standout or easy to spot drop shipping stores um, as we can see they've gone for kind of like a minimalistic type feel um, everything is kind of like pastel colors they've gone for this kind of like um, computer texty type fonts everything is really kind of contributing towards that minimalistic sense and feel of um of using beanbags or the kind of environment that they're trying to create. I probably spoke a load of rubbish there. It made sense in my head, but hopefully you can understand the point that I'm trying to put across. So they have a nice scroll on the banner here, which is a nice touch. Um, you don't see that very often. At the top, your typical menu items, home, shop, about us, journal, contact us. In fact, journal's not a usual one to see. By this, like, probably by the looks of things, just another word for blog. Let's take a look at all the different variants they're selling all the different products. So they have indoor and outdoor beanbags. What I'm going to do is just kind of like take their standard one, a white one for $150. Um, and then here we are. So this is essentially what their winning product page looks like. It's obviously doing a good job given the results that they're having. It's profitable. So there's a lot to be said and a lot that can be learned from this um, particular page. One thing I'm not keen on, looks like a bit of a glitch, is this dynamic checkout button has like a blue background with the Google badge over the top. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Uh, what I do like though is this sizing guide that actually does work so I'm not really sure what's going on there either maybe they're having some issues at the moment um, but too many people I see selling products that require sizing guides will hide them right at the bottom of the product description you want it up front right there easy to see so customers can very quickly and efficiently um, see what size they need make a decision and buy the product today is Monday when this video gets released I release videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday Wednesday I have a video coming where I'm going to show you all of the things you need to put on your Shopify store to help convert customers so if you're getting loads of people to your store and you're not converting them into customers then make sure you subscribe and tune in on Wednesday for that video so all in all, a very kind of simplistic, minimalistic type product page, um, nothing too kind of like extravagant or crazy or that difficult to replicate. I really like this touch or this section here with the soft pastel background and the icons just highlighting the different kind of important features of the product as well as the website. And just to show you this image here, so it is private labeled, even just a tiny little label like this sets these guys apart from the competition. For me or you to replicate this store, we would not be able to compete unless we were private labeling our own products as well. And it's just such a tiny touch, but it does help separate from the competition and it adds very little expense. I mean, to add a little label like that, you probably talk in pennies. What's interesting to note about this product as well is that this bean bag unfilled and requires about 250 liters of beans to fill. So what I'm guessing is that they actually literally just send in without being too harsh, um, a large pillowcase that the customer then has to unpack and fill themselves by the sounds of it. In fact, let's take a look. It will come unfilled and requires about 300 liters. So it is, they're essentially just buying the outer skin, the outer layer, and they have to then further purchase beans on top of that to fill it with. Okay, so in terms of profitability then, and this is probably why these guys are able to be so profitable, um, is so $150 they're selling a one-off for, and the size of this is one meter by 1.6 meters. I've gone on to Alibaba, so this will be pretty much where the whole 
that's pretty much where everyone goes. If you want something from China in bulk, this is the website that you go to. And here's a similar-ish product. It's not identical, but it's one of the closest ones I could find without having to spend hours drawing in through different results. So it will still give you kind of like a pretty accurate representation of how profitable, how cheaply they are being able to source this product. So it's the same shape. You've got the flat edge at the front with a triangle at the back. I'm um, same as these guys. The size of their one is one meter by 1.6 meters. The size of this one, where did I see it? Um, is 1.4 meters by one meter. And the biggest difference, so the fabric is an Oxford cotton and I think these guys are a flax linen, so a French flax linen. So it is a different material. That's probably why these guys are a bit more expensive, but nonetheless, you can buy. So if they're buying 500 of these things, they're spending $10 to get them to the door plus what their freight is. And we saw in their expenses, the freight was $260. So when you pro out to that per unit, they're probably getting these things to their own door for less than $20 a piece. Selling them for $150, that leaves a lot of room for them to acquire their customers for. Moving on to the final piece of the puzzle then. So we've seen the winning Shopify store, we've seen the winning products. We need to now know how are they selling this winning product? What do winning ad creators for this product look like? So to do this, I'm gonna use the Facebook or Meta ads library where we can see exactly what ads they're running um, for these products. So we can see these ones in March, lots of different variations. Um, and that's a common theme of every successful e-commerce business you'll come across is they don't just have one or two different creatives. They'll be testing dozens to really kind of split test and home down and narrow down and find out what works basically. So here we have a very simple carousel ad just featuring the different products in its different colors in different locations. Very simple, um, easy to create. Here we have another image ad. So image ads are brilliant for reaching big audiences for low cost because CPMs are typically a lot cheaper um, because there's lots less competition for them. They add the primary text at the top then. So go with the slow and idle with us. Comfortable luxury and affordable price. Explore a range of premium flax linen bean bags. Crafted from high grade flax linen, four unique colors, proudly Australian. So the products we know for a fact is Chinese. And thousands of happy customers, 30 day money back, free shipping with in Australia. And after pay available. So that's something I forgot to mention in fact. So somewhere on their store, I can't remember where I saw it. They do have Afterpay, so Afterpay, basically here it is at the top. So welcome to Idle Space Shop, our bundles and save up to 20% shop with Afterpay. Basically what it does is it lets them split the cost of a product um, over many months, a bit like Klarna if you're based here in the UK. So if you are selling products over the price of, I'd say $50, then give your customer the option to do so. Because what you'll also find, well, it's a fact, there'll be, there's numerous studies on this. I won't try and dig one out and find you now. You can do your own research on this, but giving people the option to split their payments over three months rather than have to fork out $150 upfront does in fact increase your average order value. What it also helps you do is come across as more legitimate by piggybacking the reputation of these household payment providers or finance providers um, and linking them to your store so you're able to piggyback off the reputation that they have. So with that being said guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up I reckon because I've shown you the store, I've shown you the context of the store, I've shown you the products, I've shown you the ad creatives, pretty much everything you need to go out there and create something similar with a similar product, a different product, but, but take the strategies and fundamentals you've seen in this and apply it to your own business. Just a final message then to leave you with is if you're getting started in this business, try not to bite off more than you can chew. Before you make a million dollars, you need to make half a million dollars. Before you make half a million, you need to make a hundred. Before you make a hundred, you need to make 50. Do not get carried away with your revenue. Do not get carried away with turning over X amount. Yes, it is exciting and it's cool to look at your phone and show your friends. And on the surface, it looks like you're making a lot of money. But like I said, try and do it as slowly and profitable as possible. And on that note, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video on Wednesday. Cheers.